I begin my reflection this morning by breaking the cardinal rule of preaching. Go to any seminary, preaching 101. And in the preaching course, they will tell you, always start with a funny antidote, a pithy story, or some way to grab their attention. But never, never start with Scripture. So with that said, let's take a look at Philippians 2. <laughs> 3 through 4. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a minute and read that silently to yourself. It's in your outline, also in your bulletin. But just take a moment and read that silently, and then we will join our voices together. Please join me. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let me unpack this particular piece of scripture that Paul writes to the church in Philippi. Perhaps the most obvious is that Paul is not discounting our self-interests. He's not saying don't have them or our self-worth. He just wants to make sure we have our priorities straight. That we are also looking at others' self-interests. And in this upside-down kingdom of God, we put others first where we love others as we love ourselves, a theme throughout Scripture, both Old and New Testaments. That brings us to the key question of chapter 30, the final chapter of Believe that asks this question. What does it mean to value others before myself? Interesting question as we wrap up Believe. And I want to take a little different slant than Randy Frazee does in this chapter. And I want to hit three highlights about what it might mean to value others before myself. The first is, when we do that, we must first never pretend. And what I mean by that is, we must always speak truth. Always be completely honest. As Christians, as disciples, the temptation, I believe, is always to be more and do more than we're supposed to. Anybody guilty of that? I struggle with that all the time. Hey, pastor, can you do A? Oh, sure, I'll do B, C, and D also. Anybody guilty of that? Many times as disciples, we overpromise and underdeliver. Humility, this idea of valuing others before ourselves, means we speak the truth. That we never pretend to be more or think more or do more than we really can. Because three of the most profound words of the English language are as follows. I don't know. I don't know. Let's hold hands and find out. Next. To value others before ourselves mean we also never presume. I'm speaking of judgment here. There is always a danger of knowing one's intent as if we have some spiritual ESP or spiritual mind reading. That somehow we always know why so and so said such and such. Or why they did whatever it is they did. <laughs> Humility in valuing others shies away from snap judgments, hasty conclusions, and negative assumptions. 
We must never pretend. We must never presume. And thirdly, we must never push. Anyone here like being pushed? We are to lead. And in order to lead, we must wait for the Lord to move first. Especially when we are in the midst of those anxious moments. Trying to be that non-anxious presence among anxious moments. I've shared it probably a dozen times. That 24-hour period from anxiousness to non-anxiousness, waiting for the Lord to move, gives everyone the freedom to think and become and liberates us all to breathe and wait on the Lord. We value others when we don't pretend, when we don't presume, when we never push. Which brings us to Randy Frazee's key idea. It says this, I choose to esteem others above myself. You want a definition for humility? There it is. I choose to esteem others above myself. How do we do that? How do we live in this humility? By esteeming others rather than tooting our own horn. A few thoughts. I think humility begins first with this understanding. To never put yourself down. Humility starts there. Never put yourself down. How can we put ourselves down if we are created in the very image of God? How can we do that knowing that we are a precious child of God? C.S. Lewis put it this way, and I'll quote him. <laughs> Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Let me do that again. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. A little play on words. Because I believe in order for one to be truly humble, one must have self-esteem. One must know their self-worth because only then it doesn't bother one to put others first. It's only when we have low esteem, when we struggle, are we really a child of God, does putting others first hurt? So humility begins with never putting yourself down so that secondly, we understand humility is always about Building others up. To edify, empower, and equip one another to become disciples. Do a little exercise with me. Humor me for a moment. As you sit there, breathe and think about that person or persons that do that for you. That whenever you are with them, you feel better. That when you leave them, you feel lifted up. Think about that person or persons who have always encouraged you, equipped you, empowered you, gave you a high five, a slap on the back or on the rug. Can you see them? Now let me ask the hard question. Do you think others are seeing you in this moment? Are people conjuring images of the way we share our humility by building others up, knowing that there are people who light the room when they enter and light the room when they leave? What images are you thinking of in this moment? Because humility is never one that puts yourself down. It is always building others up so that thirdly, we can constantly grow in Christ. You know, friends, we have spent 30 weeks in belief. We spent 31 weeks in the story. That's 61 weeks. 
But can I ask this question? Have we grown? Have our beliefs grown? Have our actions matured? Are our virtues, based on those actions and beliefs, are they growing? Because especially in this time of year, look around, everything's growing. Our lawns are growing. The flowers are growing. Road construction is growing. Everything's growing. What about our faith? Believe comes to an end this morning. The 30 chapter book written by Randy Frazee, but we end this 30th chapter knowing that it is only a mere continuation of what we believe and what we do and what we're becoming. And I want to end with these words. It has been my joy. It has been my passion. It has been my honor to share this journey with you. To look at what we believe. To look at what we do. And look toward what we're becoming. So that we might be more like Jesus Christ. That we might grow in our faith with our Lord and Savior. And I am going to end my sermon this morning in the essence of celebration. In the essence of celebrating those among us who made the decision today to continue growing in faith in Jesus Christ as we receive two more people, a husband and a wife, as new members of the Endwell United Methodist Church. And so in this moment,